Hey there. Sorry, uh, had to get a little go juice in me. Newborn baby keeps things pretty interesting. Got to stay energized. But anyways, I'm Zach. I own and operate a little KitchenAid mixer repair service called Mr. Mixer. Uh, the goal of these videos is to provide you guys with value and teach you how to repair these machines yourself. Now you say, Zach, uh, if you own a business fixing these things, why would you have? Why would you teach people how to do it? Wouldn't that hurt you? Uh, no. There's always going to be people out there like you. Good for you. Do it yourselfer. That's awesome. I want to be the person teaching you how to do this. There are some good videos out there. Unfortunately, I believe that I can do better. I can show you how, when, and why to repair these machines instead of just, this is how you replace this part. We're going to keep things interesting and uh, we're going to keep these machines running forever. Why should you allow me to teach you how to work on your machines, you ask? Well, let's take a look-see here. Now, I actually repair, probably repaired thousands of these things. This is just kind of uh, a couple weeks worth that I've been working on here. But, uh, yeah, I know these machines like the back of my hand. I've been repairing them for years. Um, I'm probably actually the foremost expert on these machines not to brag because I am I'm very humble I'm actually proud of what I do that's why I mentioned that if you're gonna do something try and be the best at it right all right let's hop right into it sorry for the messy desk here um, this is my workspace I'm organized by chaos and uh, that's how I thrive what we got is the Professional 5 Plus. Now this is going to be, as far as the internals in this machine, are going to be the exact same as the uh, 550HD, the 600 Pro HD, uh, and also the Professional 5HD, because they do have a Professional 5 Plus and a Professional 5HD. Uh, basically, the only difference between those is uh, like the 600 is a six quart bowl size versus the five on this and their motor sizes are just a little bit different okay let's start with some disassembly here what we're going to do first is we want to remove this is what they call the beauty band this silver trim and yes it is beautiful uh, to take that off all it is is a phillips head screwdriver yeah um right here there's one screw back here you're just gonna lefty loosey you don't want to do righty tighty otherwise you're going to strip that out so lefty loosey we get that removed there we go ahead and pull that out and what that's going to do is going to allow that band to pop off now from here what we should do is take note um, this is actually a really clean machine but over time oil and grease separates from these machines that's why we recommend a re-grease um, we'll have some other videos up for that shortly but you'll notice oil and grease just lining the insides of this band where it leaks out of the machine and, and connects to this band. So that's one thing you want to look for when you're taking it apart. Um, make sure you clean it. Just wipe it down with a rag and you should be golden there. Now the next thing that we're going to do is we want to remove these screws on the side here to remove the upper housing. This whole top half here is called the upper housing. Um, there's four screws. One here, one here, and they're going to be the same on each side. So let's go ahead and get that done. We just go ahead and give it a little screw here and away we go. Okay, now that we have all the screws removed, you can take note, I placed them here at the bottom of where the bowl kind of sits. It's just a good concave area to keep everything in line there. Um, at the end, what we do is, you know, we'll wipe that down anyway. So if there's any, you know, dirt, grease, debris or anything, it'll get cleaned up. Um, so now we just can go ahead and pull the top of the casing off. It just comes right off, okay? That's what it looks like, all said and done. Uh, you want to take note, you want to be very careful with this right here. This is the attachment uh, hub cover, right? So this is just pressed into place. If you apply too much pressure here, you could actually strip this out, pop this out, and then even if you get a new one, it won't want to sit in place, and you would actually have to replace this entire top part uh, to get that to look pretty again. So um, it does have some durability right it's not just going to fall right off but just be careful with it when you set it down make sure you're setting it down gentle make sure you're not knocking that around so uh yeah let's get this out of the way and keep moving okay now that we have the top off i just want to take a quick second to kind of show you guys what we have here 
and we will do more videos on all of this stuff, teaching how to replace and repair everything on here. But um, this is your motor. You got some wires coming off of it. These are the power. The power cord comes in down here, connects to the motor. The motor runs to what the, is called the speed control board. That is that right there. Sometimes that goes out on these machines. You, we will teach you how to replace that. That's what the side lever knob there that uh, controls the speed goes to. Uh, we have the hall sensor here. Sometimes that can cause issues. We'll touch up on that. But today we're gonna be looking at this right here. We're gonna go over the planetary. Um, now basically what happens is this planetary will actually separate. There's a shaft in there and we'll get to it here in a second. But uh, yeah, we'll look at changing all of the gears out and changing the planetary. Uh, so the next step that we're going to want to do is remove one, two, three, and four. There's four screws. They are Phillips head again. So let's go ahead and get those removed. Now that we've removed all of those screws, what I do is I put them back down there as well. And basically all of the ones that held the housing together and all of the ones that go in here to hold um, the transmission housing, the screws, the bolts are all the same size. So you're, if you put them back, you know, you're not going to have to like separate them and make sure they go in a certain spot. They are the exact same size, so that won't be an issue. But anyways, once all of the screws are out of there, this actually just lifts out. Um, I like to turn it a little bit as I'm pulling to keep it from hitting that speed control because you can't actually break the uh, clips on that. So anyways, we're pulled out and there's a gear there. And then in the upper housing that we removed, there is another gear there. And then there's more grease up there. So basically, um, the next step is going to be remove all of this grease, okay? Because again, if you're taking it apart, you wanna put new grease in these machines. That way they are operating to their maximum potential. The tools for the job that we're gonna be using today is a pair of split ring pliers. If you haven't seen these before, um, that's what they are. They help to remove a split ring. I'll show you when we get there. You need a Phillips head screwdriver, a rubber mallet, and a couple flat head screwdrivers. And I will show you why here in just a second. All right, folks, this is where the job starts to get a little bit dirty. I mean, I know I already showed you some of this grease, but let's go. Let's start with the removal of the grease. I recommend grabbing a handy dandy roll of paper towels here. I'm not particular on brand. Whatever you have around the house will work great. So first step is to take a paper towel and I kind of wrap it around this shaft here. You want to get as much of this goop off as you can in uh, in one pull here. So we're just going to go like that. We're going to pull that up. And uh, see, see how much we removed there? Look, look down here, we got a big old pile of grease. Um, you can save this to wipe some more grease later, uh, or you can just throw it away. I'm gonna throw it away for now. Um, I recommend also you have a towel of some kind or a paper towel or something to set some of the gears on as we start the removal process. One thing I forgot to mention is it might be a good idea to have a little, uh, little putty knife. Not a huge deal. I recommend a plastic one if you're going to get one. This can be done without it. Um, it is dirty. If you want some gloves as well, I don't mind getting my hands dirty. But if you are a person that doesn't like to get grease on your hands, probably get a pair of rubber gloves. But um, from here, what we're going to start doing is we're just going to start removing portions of this grease, right? And we're just going to get as much out of there as we can uh, without removing anything yet. Uh, so we'll just do a couple scoops here, see what we can get out of there. And again, I recommend just having a paper towel on the side, wipe this off, and then wash, rinse, repeat. Okay, now that we got a fair portion of that grease out of there, what we're going to do is we're going to remove what we call the worm gear. And this just pulls right out. It's actually a floating gear. Um, it's held in place by these little bearings here on the end, these little brass things. You kind of see how they're flat on the sides. They fit in into little channels right there. So when you go to replace it, it literally just drops down in there like so. So just pull that out and go ahead and set that over on your paper towel out of the way. All right, now if you would like, now that the worm gear's out of the way, if you'd like, you can do a little bit more uh, kind of getting some of the grease around off these sides because we are going to be pulling these gears. So and it doesn't have to be, again, these don't have to be super clean yet. You just kind of want to get whatever you can to prevent you from making a big fat mess there. So just get that a little bit more cleaned up. I would also recommend one more kind of wrap around the sh planetary shaft there and kind of clean that up one more time here. 
because now we're about to pull these gears. All right, let's get to it. Okay, had to put the chest mount on because it's literally impossible to do this with one hand. Sometimes it's a little difficult to do with two even, but I have faith in you guys and I'm gonna show you how to do it. We'll get it knocked out. So again, you wanna get those little nubbins right in there. You wanna apply some pressure. You can kind of see the ring flexing a little bit as I do that, it's gonna open it up a bit. What I like to do is just pop a screwdriver in right back there and just help it get right over that lip. Okay, because I'll show you here in a second. There's a little channel in there. And then from there, what I like to do once we're out, we can start to just apply a little bit of pressure. You don't want to make sure not to bend this ring. It is pretty hardy, but uh, we just want to start applying a little pressure and going around and just kind of prying it up just a smidge. And I'll show you why, because it's going to make it a lot easier to get that ring off of there here in a second. Um, I would keep pressure on the left side that you already had lifted while you're working your way around, or it will pop back down into that channel and you will have to restart again. Now, once you have both out of the channel, you can kind of come on both sides like this and just pry up just a little bit here. We're going to get those up just a smidge. Okay, now that we have those up and out of the way let's see if you can see right down there there's a little channel we'll see once we get the grease cleaned off but now that we're up and out of that now we can go ahead and come from the underside with our split ring pliers here and it makes it a lot easier they're going to clip right into there now and you can use a paper towel use whatever um, be careful because once we get up to the top here this thing is going to want to shoot off so again this is how I like to do it. I'll take a paper towel, I'll wrap around the side like that, and I'll pull up on the paper towel, I'll grab the back side of that ring, and I will pull up as I'm separating this ring here. And you can see it just starts sliding off. Eventually we get it up to the close to the top. Once you get it close to the top, I like to actually come all the way over the top because like I said, um, I've had these actually go flying across the room and they're really hard to find. So yeah, just. There we go. So here is a closer look at that, what we have. This is called the split ring there. So now that that's off, we can go ahead and set it back down with the rest of our stuff and move on to the next step. All right, the next step in our process is going to be removal of the bevel gear, okay? So what we're gonna do is uh, get you uh, your flathead screwdriver again. And so there is a gear here, the bevel gear, and then underneath it, is the worm follower gear right so what we're going to do is in between those there's just a little gap you just kind of want to wiggle this screwdriver in here let's see if we can find a good spot for it you might have to get your hand a little dirty there we go see we get in and we just start kind of twisting applying a little bit of upwards pressure and you'll see it start to break loose sometimes it can be a little tighter than usual guys um, sometimes you have to work at it a little bit but it will come off just apply apply some pressure, work it around. Sometimes you have to get two screwdrivers and um, you know, pry from both sides to make it a little easier, but uh, it should come right off. Now that we have the bevel gear removed, we'll go ahead and place it back down you know, with the rest of our gears there. Um, you can clean off your fingers, whatever you want. They're gonna be constantly dirty, so don't fret too much. Next thing we're gonna wanna do is removal of this roll pin right here, and it's like you don't need a special punch for this one um, it slides in and out real easily so what we're going to want to do is just see if we can grab it here and you just kind of pull on it super easy be careful not to lose it i put that back down here with that stuff and then the very next step is to actually remove the entire planetary um so if your gears were bad, if your machine was like running, but the, the paddle wasn't spinning or it was grinding real bad, this is generally going to be the gear that you have to remove to get to that. So um, that's nice. That's just an extra step. But today we're more focusing on this actual planetary shaft here. So this shaft is actually pressed into this lower shaft here. Okay, now what happens is that'll actually separate and um, there's really no way to get it back together. Um, it just gets worn. It happens on occasion and you have to replace. So this is where the rubber mallet comes in. Now that, make sure you have that pin out before you do this because you don't wanna start banging on it with that pin. But now we're just gonna apply some light taps, guys. Okay, tap, tap, tap a -roo, and it'll slide right out, just like so. 
Here's a quick side-by-side -side comparison of why we're actually changing this out. This is what I was talking about here. Here is the planetary shaft that runs up and has the gear sitting on it. This one, you see it no longer has the shaft. Um, they just fall off over time and there's little teeth in there that you can't see that the shaft is pressed into. It just, like I said, they just wear out over time and you just have to replace it. I believe it's like about a $45 part. So let's, uh, let's get back to it. Once you have the planetary shaft removed, this gear actually is just in there. It pulls right away. Um, this is what it looks like here. Um, we want to take note. We're going to get them cleaned up real quick, but we're actually going to inspect these gears. I'm going to show you what to look for just in case we need to replace these bad boys. It's always a good idea if you notice a lot of wear to replace them while you already have it apart. Otherwise, you're going to be doing this whole process over again. You'll have to regrease it because you'll get metal shards and whatnot in your gearbox. So it's always a good idea if you find damage to replace at the time it's apart. This is what the gearbox looks like once you have all of the gears and the shaft removed. We're going to be playing in the mud again. You can see all of this uh, grease right here and up here. We're going to want to clean this gearbox out. It doesn't have to be spotless, but you do want to get a majority of the grease out of here. And we'll show you what it looks like when it's done. Um, also, take note, I don't know if you can tell, you can see a little bit of silver shiny stuff right there. That is actually, uh, you know, little pieces of the gear, little shavings of metal that have worn themselves off. And this is just normal wear, guys. It happens over time. But if you notice things like that, it is a possibility that uh, you, you will need to replace a gear. So let's just go ahead and get to it and just start scooping this stuff out. And I'll show you how clean it should be once I get to the end of it. Quick tip for you as well. If you do not have, you know, your little putty knife, just use a flathead screwdriver and just do some of that, okay? makes it super easy all right we're near the end of her here this is kind of what it looks like here it's pretty clean but last step i like to do to get it extra clean is go ahead and just kind of wipe it out with a paper towel um, you know you're just picking up a little bit of the remainder in there make sure that you always want to get up underneath the motor shaft here there's some stuff that can hide up there um, there is a fan in the back you can kind of spin it and it'll actually spin that as well. It's not going to cause any harm. You can see that there's on the underside, there's a little grease there. So we like to get all of that off of there. Be careful because some of these are kind of sharp. So try not to uh, get your finger cut there. Um, if you want to take it a step further, you can kind of weasel your paper towel up underneath there, um, kind of wiggle it out. Just make sure that you don't have any, you know, remaining pieces of paper towel that got ripped or something that are stuck in there. Don't forget to pull the gear that was right here. It's a little hub gear. Pull that, clean that as well. Make sure that you get all the grease out from in here too. Again, it doesn't have to be super spotless, but you don't want any large chunks up in there. So uh, you can just take a screwdriver, your finger, whatever, just run it around there, get some of that grease out of there. Maybe a paper towel at the end, just for the final touch. All right, now that we've got the gearbox cleaned out and we got all the gears out, this is kind of where our paths are going to make a little bit of a segue because I have that little blue thing there, a lovely parts washer. It makes this super easy, but it's gonna be just as easy for you guys. This is how I used to do it before I did this full time, uh, the, what I like to call the old fashioned way. So what you're gonna wanna do is get a paper towel. You know, we'll pick up a gear here. Um, we're gonna, I wanted to say swaddle. I just had a new baby, so that's what's on my mind right now. But we're just gonna kinda do this, clean these off here, give it a few, wipes uh you can tell how much cleaner that is already right so the next step that we're going to do is we're going to want to find our phillips head screwdriver and what i like to do is i just like to run through these gear teeth just like this um again you don't have to get these super clean but you want to get a majority of the grease in between these out so you just keep going through them like that and you'll keep getting you know piece after piece you see that little there i'll wipe it off and i'll just keep going and you'll just want to do this all the way around. Okay, now that we've been all the way around, you know, we got it pretty clean here. Uh, if you're a overachiever or a super neat freak, um, I know I am when it comes to my customers, what I like to do is you can take a towel or a paper towel and rub that in between the teeth as well just to get that extra, extra clean, um, but not overly necessary. The next thing you're going to want to do is actually look at the walls of these gears. Um, this one, I don't know if you can tell, like right there, 
you'll see start seeing like little half moon indentions in this this is just wear um if it's only slight i don't recommend replacing it but if it looks like a like a fair portion of this material is eaten off i would stop i would replace this gear this is called the worm gear and they are the same in the six quart professional the five plus you know everything that i mentioned earlier so um, they are a standard gear uh wash rinse repeat guys what we're going to do is we're just going to clean up these next gears here and uh, once we got them all clean we'll get back with you all right guys when you get to the worm gear here you're going to see again i discussed those little bearings here we're going to remove those and what you're going to find is there's going to be what they call the bearing sleeve which is this little guy there's one on each end uh, i do want you to take note of the bearing that's actually in here see there's a bearing in the middle and then there's two washers you see the little channel that runs in the outside one so they sit in that channel like so and then there's also a channel on this one and it those little balls just sit in the middle of that and then it goes back onto the shaft now take note of this back one okay because these are different sizes you will notice that the the back one has a little bit of a lip on it right here dropping stuff back one has a little bit of a lip on it to where this one does not have a lip at all the one that goes with the bearings goes on the front half of the gear up here and the one that actually has this extra little lip is going to go on the back here you don't want to mix those up otherwise that gear's not going to sit in there properly all right ladies and gentlemen not to be braggadocious here but i just wanted to show you my little setup here uh, this is called a parts washer i just have some degreasing cleaning solution i just wash it under you know i give them a give them a few scrubs here and uh, look how fast it starts to clean that up. I know it's a lot better than the screwdriver, but I feel your pain because I did that for a long time when I first started repairing these machines. So I just figured I had to brag. I was being braggadocious. I'm sorry. Now that I bragged to you guys about my parts washer, you can have the last laugh. These are my sweet Ray-Bans that I've had for a while, and I have giant streaks in them now because I let the chemical from the parts washer get on there, and so now I'm seeing these big old disgusting marks everywhere I go. I now bring you this intermission to see my dogs run around and do dumb things because uh, as much as I love them, they are not the brightest. Something else you might see if you follow this channel is our precious little baby boy that we just brought home. He is 35 weeks today. He was born early and there's his beautiful mommy right there. All right, now that we got all these gears cleaned up, let's take a brief moment to talk about what is acceptable wear and what is not acceptable wear. So you can kind of see how the different colors, see how it's dark there and light there. You can see it's kind of shaved off uh these still have most of their durability you can definitely tell there's a little bit of wear but these will actually start to warp and start to concave and that's when you know that they're going to need to be replaced um, if you have more wear than this one probably go ahead and replace it this is called the bevel gear uh, if you don't these teeth can actually snap off and get sent around the gearbox and damage some of the gears um, this is the hub gear again you're going to notice wear some of this material will start to shave off this one's pretty good you generally don't have to worry about this one uh this one as well every once in a while you'll get like one of these teeth chipped off so when before you put it back in make sure you're spinning it around feeling for any imperfections any chips damage um also this front wall right here so what this is is this gear kind of floats in that gearbox and it shimmies a little bit uh, if you mix a lot of heavy stuff, you'll notice that the front right here will start to wear down and actually start to bevel back that way. Um, if it's really bad, I would recommend replacing it. This is the worm gear, uh, but this one looks good. Um, don't really notice any damage with that. And then the last one. All right, now we're looking at the actual worm follower gear. Uh, you can definitely tell. You see that little half moon kind of indention right there? Um, you can see it just about on every single one of these teeth. Uh, this is probably an acceptable level, but this you wouldn't want to let it go much more than this. You can kind of see how it starts to concave these a little bit. These should be completely straight. So it's shaving off some of that there. Um, if yours is damaged any more than this, I recommend replacing. This is the worm follower gear. Uh, again, they are standard in the five HD, 5 Plus, 6 Pro, um, all of these are going to be the same, so just type that into the old Google and you'll find her. 
All right, now that we got everything cleaned up, we're ready to start putting it back together. Before we start putting any grease in there though, I wanna take note, this is called the planetary bearing here, bearing sleeve, it slits down into there, it slides right in. Uh, you wanna take a look at the inside of this wall down. If you see any major like scarring or big, uh, you know, gouges in there or anything like that. We probably want to replace that. Also, if it's super loose right here, uh, might want to replace that as well. Another issue that I've seen with these machines, if you get to this point up here, it actually starts to crack around this casing here and this whole piece comes loose. Uh, if that is the case, uh, we will have to actually replace this entire lower housing. So we would have to take the motor, the speed control and everything out and put a new one in there. Um, it's about a $50 part or so. Uh, we will make some more videos here in the future. If you guys have that issue, we'll make sure to kind of teach you how to take care of it. So let's get this thing put back together. All right, now that we've got everything cleaned up and we're ready to go back together, this is the grease that we're going to be using. It is a white multi-purpose NSF H1 food safe grease. Make sure you are using food safe grease with these machines. Um, if you would like to purchase grease from us, guys, it's I think like 15 bucks. We can get it shipped right to you, easy peasy. Uh, you will not find this quality of grease anywhere any cheaper. And if you feel like this channel is providing you with some value, it's just a good way to help support us uh, why we help you out. So let's get to it. What we're gonna wanna do is get a big old scoop of grease. I usually get it on my finger just like so. And we're just gonna plop it right into there. I generally like to start on this left side here. I'll kind of fill that channel and I'll work my way around, making sure to fill all of this in. We don't want a whole bunch of extra space in there. Sometimes, like probably when you guys take some of yours apart, you will notice that there's quite a bit of extra space in there. That's just poor grease packing. Um, I see it, it comes from the factory that way sometimes. Uh, sometimes they're not always perfect, but yeah, hey, let's just get this thing kind of good and packed up there. That's probably an acceptable amount, um, but yeah, just keep scooping. Uh, I like to really make sure that we're getting this motor shaft well lubricated. Uh, make sure that that's going around enough to where it's actually, as it's spinning, picking back up some grease and spinning it around in there. And okay. All right, now once your gearbox kind of looks like this, you feel like you got a healthy layer of grease in there, don't wipe your hand off just yet. No one ever tells you to do this, but I am going to because it's a little trick of the trade. You can see up here, there's, there's a ring right here called the external gear that runs around. That is what the planetary right here actually rides on. This gear kind of rides around that. So what I like to do is take this extra grease and just, it doesn't have to be whopping, just kind of do a quick coat of that in there to get those teeth lubricated. Um, it's going to make your machine sound a lot better. You're going to hear a lot less metal on metal. Um, it's gonna just kind of make sure everything's running nice and beautifully. Okay, once you have that lower outer gear there coated up, we're gonna come back up to the top. What we're gonna wanna do at this point is also put a little bit of grease on this gear right here. Doesn't have to be a whopping amount. We just like to put a little bit on it, get a little bit in between each tooth, maybe a little bit on the top, just like so. There you go, guys, nothing crazy, just a little bit. And then what we're gonna do is this will actually just slide right back up into the planetary. You do wanna take note, make sure that your little washer's there because you do need that. Sometimes it will stick up here where it, um, it actually came out of. There'll be a little, um, I guess, ring that it sits on. It'll stick up there. So uh, if you don't see it on here, that's likely where it is. So let's go ahead and get this on there. It's just going to slide right back up into there. It just pushes up. Now, once you get to this point, you're going to notice that that gear sits there. You're just going to want to kind of rotate it a little bit until it gets in line. There we go. You see it kind of popped up into there. Now at this point, we can go ahead and put our first gear back on. This is the worm follower gear, right? So all we're going to do is put it right over the top, just like so. Um, I like to grab it with both sides like this, hold that in place. And then with my thumbs, I'll press it down into place. Now, sometimes, guys, this can be a little bit of a task. It can be a little tight. Uh, if you want to lube this shaft up, maybe lube that up a little bit. It'll help it slide better. If it's really tight, you can kind of take your rubber mallet and just barely tap on it, see if you can get it to go down. That will usually help take care of the issue. Once that gear's in place, now we want to get that little pin. Remember, we set it back down. This is where we, we pulled it out from this shaft here. You can tell 
that there is a hole for it right there. And so what we're gonna do is we're just going to slide it through there, just like so. And now it is held into place. You no longer have to hold this. Um, it is good, it will not move at this point. So then we can move over to our bevel gear here. Now I went ahead and pre-lubed this shaft so it sits a little bit easier in there. Um, before we put that on though, what I like to do is add a little bit more grease. So let's dig back into our pail here. Um, I like to just really make sure that I get all of this coated nice and good, okay? So you can rotate this as you go if you really want to get all sides of it there. Um, I do recommend really just getting these just packed with grease. Um, we're going to add more back in as we go. We're just, this is just kind of a little segue, I guess, in between adding more grease. There we go. Now you see this thing starting to look pretty good, pretty packed. Uh, now we can move on to the bevel gear. Now, you noticed before, and I shouldn't have covered this up, but you can see how this particular gear right here, you see how it has this cutout? You see it's kind of uh, straight there, rounded, straight. You want that pin that you put in to line up with the straight sides. You want it to just line up. You want it to be sticking out, that pin sticking out about the same distance on both sides. Because if you turn this over, you can see the little channels where that pin actually slides into. So then we just pop this over the top here. Um, kind of wiggle it a little bit. You'll get the feel for it. Um, once you get it on there, you saw how that grease pushed out. That's how you know it fell down into that channel. So now we are in place. Everything is rocking and good to go. We are gonna apply more grease to this. Uh, just, yeah, go ahead and put more grease up here. All right, now that we got the worm gear and the, excuse me, the worm follower gear and the bevel gear back in place, we wanna go ahead and put this split ring back on, guys. So what we're gonna do is uh, we're gonna take our split ring pliers again. What I like to do is I just set it on top, just like that, okay? Then we're gonna go ahead and get your little nubbins in the hole. I apply pressure back here, downward pressure, to hold it in place, and as I open this up, it's gonna slide onto there, hopefully. Sometimes these can be a little bit tricky, there we go, now we got it around and we'll just put downward pressure and keep spreading it. Um, you see down here, I was telling you, you can kind of see that little channel in there. You will feel it kind of click into place when you have it. There you go, you heard it click. You get it all the way down, it's back in that channel. Um, you can't just pull it up now. See, it's locked into place now. So now we can go ahead and start, uh, you know, finishing up with the re-greasing and putting it back together. We got another healthy coating of grease back on there. That's what it should look like. Now it's time to go ahead and put this gear back into place. This is the worm gear. Now remember, I want to emphasize on this. The side with the extra little portion of the sleeve needs to go on the back here. You see how it kind of fits perfect. It's pretty flush with that. Uh, then we're going to go ahead and make sure that your little bearing is back in place. It doesn't matter if this goes this way or this way, as long as the two bearings uh, holders are on the outside and the ball bearing part is in the middle, you wanna sandwich that, push that back together, and then the one without the excess part of the sleeve slides on just like that. Um, again, you can see how these are beveled a little bit, right? They're circle and then they have a flat edge, right? They actually fit into this. There's a little channel that they slide down into. So when we go ahead and push it, you want the gear to be closest to the motor. And we're just going to kind of slide it down in there. And you will see it'll slide down in uh, and it'll just fit in there perfectly. And now it is good to be re-greased. All right. Now that we got the, uh, the gearbox grease there, we're going to go ahead and work on the upper housing. Now yours might be a little different. Your might, yours might be this aluminum style um, these are actually better in my opinion but some of them come with plastic instead uh, this is what the plastic one looks like this is the aluminum again they are they're the same it's not going to be an issue um, this is going to apply for both of these so what we're going to do here is we want to go ahead we're going to get some more uh, grease on here and i just kind of go around the sides of this give it a nice healthy coating all the way around it doesn't have to be completely globbed full or anything but yeah. Once you get a little bit of a coating in there, we can go ahead and drop this gear back into place. This is the uh, the hub gear. And basically, you know, you see that little hole right there. That's what uh, connects on the front of the machine and you hook your, uh, 
you know, your grinder and your slicers and things like that too. Uh, so what we're going to do now is this actually just kind of pops down into there. It sits in that little channel. It'll just slide in just like so. And then we want to give that a nice healthy coating as well. So we'll just get a little more grease. Um, it will spin when you just kind of spin it with your finger, it'll spin in there. And, uh, you know, just give it some grease, make sure that it's coated. You don't want any exposed teeth. Okay, now that we got it all coated, let's go ahead and put it all back together. All right, now we're at the reassembly stage of the machine. Uh, you do want to check and make sure that your little gasket is still on here. It's like a little cardboard gasket. Um, you don't want to peel it off if it's stuck on there. Uh, if it's torn or ripped or anything, you probably do want to replace it. But again, uh, you can definitely make it work. I would replace it for a customer. But uh, if it's just around your house and you don't really care, it's not going to be a huge issue. Uh, so what we're going to do, you see this little cutout back here. You obviously want the hub attachment gear facing you. This is going to go onto the motor shaft back there. So we're just going to come in like this, okay? I always come in, I angle it a little bit this way to slide around. That way I'm not getting grease on this here. Um, no one will tell you that, but if you put it on the wrong way, you can definitely get grease all over your electronics. You don't want that. So I'll angle it, and then I'll slowly rotate it back and wiggle it into place. And what it should drop directly down into there, be flush. You shouldn't have any gaps in here. Um, all of this should be flush. If you do have a gap, what you want to do is just spin that fan again, guys. Just give it a few little turns and it should drop down into place. If it doesn't, you have something out of alignment just a little bit. And so I would recommend taking this back off, uh, wiggling things around just to get everything into alignment. Um, and then again, yeah, once you get it flush, now it's time to repeat the process. Same way we took it apart. You're going to have the four screws, one, two, three, four. So let's go ahead and get those put in. Heed my warning no other channel is going to tell you this they don't take the time they just want to show you how to do it i want these things to be cared for i want them to last you forever if you have the plastic housing do not over tighten these screws right here if you over tighten these screws it'll actually break this entire portion of the housing off which will allow this gear the floating gear that i told you about right here the worm gear to just bounce all around in there it'll destroy everything in there so if you have a crack here um, if you're putting it together and you crack it uh, i would recommend replacing it i'd recommend getting that aluminum one because that's going to be a little bit more sturdier if not get another black plastic one that's fine just again these don't have to be overly tight you just want them to, just to the snug point and you're done All right, we got three of them in. We're gonna go for the last one. The last one's right there. It's kind of a pain to get in there. Some people say they recommend taking the speed control off. I absolutely do not because you can absolutely break these clips right here really easy. And if you do that, then you're stuck buying a new part. It's about 60 bucks. So do not mess with that unless you're having issues with it. We'll cover that in the near future. What I like to do, there's two different ways. If you have a screwdriver with a magnetic bit that you can drop it down in there, it'd be super easy. If not, what I like to do is just take my two fingers and just, it's hard to see, but just get it down in there to where you get it into the hole. And then once it's once you get it into that hole, it'll just sit like that. Uh, then we're going to take our screwdriver. Make sure everything's unplugged at this point, guys. Um, if you notice a little bit of seepage of uh, grease there on the sides, not a huge deal. It's not really going to affect anything. It's not going to move. Uh, if it bothers you, uh, which it bothers me whenever I work on customers' machines, I give these things back to them sparkling like new, but uh, you could just take a paper towel, run it under that lip, clean some of that up off of there. Uh, yeah, just that simple. It's not going to leak out of there. It's not going to get into your food or anything from right there. Not an issue at all. But again, if you're kind of a little bit of a neat freak like me, go ahead and clean that up. All right, the last melon. We are on the last step here. Basically, all we're going to do is put this upper housing right over the top again. It's going to slide right on. Sometimes you got to wiggle it a little bit. Um, you want it to be sitting flush, just like so. Okay, so then we go ahead, we get the rest of our screws here, and we're going to do one, two, three, four. Okay, everyone, we have reached the very last step. We're just gonna be reapplying the beauty band back onto this machine. Uh, you can tell how it's kind of channeled right here. All you're gonna wanna do is slide that in just like that. It'll just kinda pop into place. 
Um, sometimes you have to wiggle around this to make sure it's sitting just right, but it'll sit flush. And all you want to do is make sure that this is lined up. You can see the screw hole there. And so then, of course, I, I dropped my screw down here. Luckily, it didn't go too far. We're just going to put that in right there. We're going to give it a few turns here. I have seen people over tighten these and strip this out to where the screw no longer holds the beauty band in, in place real tight. So don't over tighten it. Do not use a power tool for this. Do it by hand and you just want it to be snug. Okay. You don't want it to be overly tight. Um, and once it is in there, that completes the end of the regrease of the bowl lift professional models. Now, if this, uh, has provided you value, uh, please feel free to donate to the channel. We'd really appreciate it. I'll add a link to PayPal down below. Um, if you would like to order grease from us, please, that's just another way to help us continue making these videos. We intend to do a complete line, everything on these bull raise machines, good. Everything on every single tilt head machine we are going to put out. We're also going to put out things on uh, some of the older machines, the three C's, the four C's, vintage. Um, we got some Hobart machines over there, guys. You see, we're gonna do some of these in the future. Uh, also over here, we got this big old 60 quarter as well. We're gonna be going through all this stuff, guys. So and, uh, I hope everyone has a fantastic week.